I've been the best ever since day one when I walked into this company and I've been vilified and hated since that day because Paul Heyman saw something in me that nobody else wanted to admit. That's right, I'm a Paul Heyman guy. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. It's time for the Marvel October 2021 solicitation. Normally I would do a, you know, just a little disclaimer here. But I've been told, Wes, it's time to nut up and stop being such a pussy and putting that disclaimer out there. If people can't take a joke, they can't take a joke. We're just here to have fun. Talk about the comics coming out in October 2021. I'm going to make a joke here or there, possibly uh, that, that you won't like, but it's all in good fun. It's nothing personal. We're just here to talk about comics. It's like a 25-minute conversation, maybe even 30 minutes because it's Marvel and they publish so many damn comic books. It's going to take me a while to get through here. I try to make it as enjoyable as possible. Now, talking about speak. Now, speaking of making things enjoyable, Marvel just is the gift that keeps on giving. We've been waiting for Daniel Kibblesmith, right? I've been on pins and needles waiting for this damn new Warriors to come out. The most downvoted comic book video in the history of YouTube. One of the most downvoted videos ever in YouTube history was the trailer for his damn new Warriors, Say Space, and uh, who else we got? Snowflake. There's some other stupid characters in there. I'm, I, I still hope we get it. Let's put it that way. But that, we're getting Daniel Kibblesmith. In October, we ain't getting new Warriors. We're getting, boom, he's on Blade. I can't imagine a worse fit for that character. You're taking one of the most low-T, beta male writers in the entire industry, and you're putting them on one of the most badass alpha male characters anyone's ever seen. Marvel is the key, the gift that keeps on giving. Sure, every once in a while they give us something great. You know, your uh, your Daredevil. We, we've got some other good stuff. Your Daniel Warren Johnson, Beta Ray Bill, Amazing Fantasy, which comes out next week from Carrie Andrews. Don't forget, don't sleep on that one. You need to get your first issue on that one. There is a, I think it's Captain America, Ryden Griffin. That's not enough to, to sell you. I don't know what to tell you. So there are cool things that come out from Marvel Comics. Don't get me wrong. But most, more than likely, they're going to deliver Daniel Kibblesmith <laughs> on Blade. My goodness. Release the, the new Warriors cut. That's what I say. That's what we've all been waiting for. This is what Darkhold played, so it's going to be a one-shot going on that Darkhold event. Is it Steve Orlando? I can't remember. We'll get there when we get to the, to the, um, to the solicitation information. But this is what Darkhold Blade is all about. The King of Death. Are you fanged or are you food? The world is divided into humans and vampires and blade. The one who walks between both, it kills with equal impunity. After reading about the cursed dark hold, blade and a cadre of other heroes were meant to enter Cthon's dimension and stop the ancient god from destroying the multiverse. It sounds important. But reading the book has changed all their lives and histories. And for blade, the consequences are far reaching. Vampires rule the world and he rules over all of them. But there are some heroes left, and Blade is not as omniscient as he thinks. Didn't we just see this in Heroes Reborn? Jeez, they, it's like they just do the same stuff over and over. Now, let's hear from Kibble Smith himself in the most low-T voice. I can't do it because I'm, I'm way too, uh, <laughs> too high-T for this. But you can imagine if I had a low-T voice. That's what I'd sound like when I read this from Daniel Kibble Smith. Anyone who knows me or follows me online probably knows I've been writing this comic since the theater lights came back up in August of 98. There isn't a single character more important to me as a Marvel fan and now creator, and it's a dream come true to put him through his own worst nightmare. Blade has been slashing his way down a dark path virtually since the day he was born, with his inner demons always barely held in check. When the Dark Horde unleashes the greatest horrors the Marvel Universe has ever seen, we get to push Blade farther into darkness than he's ever gone before and learn what makes a hero in a world that's already lost. They forgot to mention the, the female character that's going to overshadow him and, and maybe teach him what it's like to be a real man. Whatever. Hey, you can't make this stuff up, right? We never get Blade stuff. You know, yes, he was a little bit in Heroes Report. He's been in Avengers. You never get a Blade standalone book. You finally do? Low T Daniel Kibblesmith. Marvel Comics for you. That's all I got to say about that. 
Let's get into the rest of the October 2021 solicitations for Marvel Comics through the power of magic. I shall be there soon. First up, we've got Venom number one from Al Ewing and Ram B. Brian Hitch on art. And a, a plethora of, of uh, variant covers. This is obviously the Peach Bamoko uh, version. An epic all-new era for the Sinister Symbiote starts here. Hot off the heels of Venom 200 and Extreme Carnage. We're closing out 2021 with one of the most ambitious books in symbiote history. Literally. Okay. We just read Donny Kate's Venom where there was a, a symbiote god introduced and he took over the world and everyone almost died. Let's hold back on the most ambitious symbiote history book ever, okay? Whatever. I'm going to read this, although look at that price. Six dollars. Six dollars. My goodness. It is 56 pages. That's a lot of money. Amazing Spider-Man 75. This is going to be the first issue of the, I don't know, the, the Spider-Man Brain Trust. We've obviously got Peter Parker and Ben Riley on the cover. And this is going to be written by Zeb Wells, Patrick Gleason, and then Beyond Board, Kelly Thompson, Saladin Ahmed, Cody Ziegler, Patrick Gleason, and Zeb Wells. So apparently Zeb Wells is the primary writer, and they're the team that are getting all these things together. Six dollars. My goodness. They went up to six dollars this month. I didn't think that would happen until 2022. Fuck me. There you go. Amazing Spider-Man is back to thrice monthly because the story is pure jet fuel. Ben Riley has returned to New York City and has fully taken back the mantle of Spider-Man. What does that mean for Peter Parker? It means he's dead. I'm sorry. Amazing Spider-Man 76. You can see he's about to die here. This is when we finally get that. This Zeb Wells, like I said, is the writer, the same team. Zeb Wells and Patrick Leeson will remind you why you love and hate comics. Yeah, he's going to die. Amazing Spider-Man 77. I'm going to be honest. I do not like that cover at all. I think it's awful. And this one is written by Kelly Thompson with Sarah Pacelli on art. Kelly and Sarah pick up the baton to define the new era of Spider-Man. Why do they call it the new era of Spider-Man? This is the temporary era of Spider-Man until the real writer comes on board. Whatever. $4. Whoa. Okay, it's back to $4. I bet, ooh, Mortal Hulk 50. I was going to say I bet it's $6. It's $10. <laughs> well, it is an issue number 50, so it's a milestone, and it's the end of a, an era. Obviously, Al Ewing and Joe Bennett have done spectacular work, along with Alex Ross on covers. Don't want to uh, undersell him. Is that Alex Ross? There, that's Alex Ross. I was going to say, that doesn't look like an Alex Ross cover. And this is the final issue before Donny Cates and Ryan Otley take over. I uh, almost said Immortal Hulk. Incredible Hulk, number one. It's $10. I haven't been reading this. I'm certainly not going to go in on a $10 comic book for something I haven't read. Dark Ages number two. This is something I'm definitely down for the cause. I'm Coelho, Tom Taylor. This has been the works for a while. We can see X-23 probably featured on the cover, at least that one. It's been years since the age of technology ended in a single moment, like a switch has been flicked off to an entire planet. Now Earth's heroes attempt to bring humanity back together from the darkness. X-Men and Avengers, vigilantes and villains all work together to create something better. Man, are we going to get whatever? I'm not even going to. I'm going to read it. We'll see what happens. Doctor or Death of Doctor Strange Avengers number one. Great. There's going to be tie ins. Five dollars. Alex Pacnadel. You ever heard of him? Me neither. Strange Academy presents Death of Doctor Strange number one. Well, it is Scotty, Scotty Young. I, you know what? I'm reading Strange Academy with my kid. He loves it. He's not going to care about this. So I don't care about it either. Five dollars. Death of Doctor Strange two of five. Jed McKay, Lee Garbert. Wow, he's got imaginary knives stuck all in him. With the source of Supreme gone, so too are many Earth's magical defenses. Now the rest of Earth's heroes have their hands full with multiple invasions from other dimensions. Some of them are familiar and some are new and frightening. Meet the three mothers. Oh, that sounds terrifying. Inferno, two of four. Is that is that the wonderful Emma Frost? Jonathan Hickman, Stefano Caselli. Well, I wish they would just get one artist. It's a four-issue miniseries. It's not like Stefano Caselli is doing anything else. Just let him do the whole series. He should be a primary artist on something anyway. Although I think he did Murano's there for a minute. 
Secrets, lies. They have a way of coming out and biting you when they least expect them. The secrets and lies of Krakoa will shake it to its foundation. Head of X, Jonathan Heck. Why do they even call him that anymore? They freely admitted that he's not the head of X anymore. He's the tail of X. He's the appendage of X. He's just a hangers-on now. Six dollars. Oh, my goodness. Well, at least that was four. Legends. Black Panther Legends. This is going to be like a new um, like middle school line. Darkhold Blade. We just talked about that one. Darkhold Iron Man. Ryan North. Doesn't he always get canceled? When I say canceled, like his comics get canceled, not like he's been canceled. Marvel Voices Community. Communidades. So this is the Latino version of Marvel Voices. $10. Luke Cage City of Fire. I already talked about that one on the channel. $5. We'll see, Hoche Anderson. We'll see. Kazar, Lord of the Savage Land. Zach Thompson. It's a dope cover. It's a dope cover. I like it. There's also a map variant cover by Herman Garcia. I like maps. I'm not even joking. Keg the Conqueror, three of five. What is wrong with Marvel? They got, like, decent covers now. I mean, this isn't the most... This isn't the greatest cover ever, but they're not staring in different directions. It's weird. Colin Kelly and Jackson Lang Lanzig. Black Panther number three, John Ridley, Juan Cabal. Oh, he's groveling before Storm because she is the new uh, regent of Mars. I liked it better when Black Panther didn't grovel before anybody. And he told everyone to go screw themselves. We'll see if that happens there. But that is a female character. That's a male character. He's likely to bow. Miss Marvel, Marvel Tales number one. Kelly Sudakonic and G. Willow Wilson for eight dollars. At least they knew that you gotta take two dollars off. One dollar for Kelly, one dollar for G. Willow. <laughs> Miss Marvel Beyond the Limit, two of five. Samir Ahmed. Andres Gunolit. Whatever. Dark Hawk, three of five. Kyle Higgins. Who is it? And is it Dark Carlos's fault? Oh, someone died. Oh, you can see he's right there. He's crying. He's clearly beside himself. Uh, this is it. You guys need to be ready for this. This is coming out next week, the very first issue. Uh, huh. Look at that. That's the cover that you should buy for Amazing Fantasy. Those look really good, by the way. This is War, Teenage Spider-Man, World War II Cap, and Spy School Black Widow fight to survive their amazing fantasy. Sold. Five dollars. Deadpool, Black, White, and Blood. I cannot understate how much I hate that gimmick now that it's been overused so much. Moon Knight 4. Really enjoyed the very first um, first issue. Really liked the art by Alessandro Capuccio. Looks like we're going to continue to get Steve McNiven covers. Very smart move. That looks... I mean, hey, it's... it's as far as Marvel covers in 2021 goes, that's great. It's only $4. I'm already sold. Eternals Forever, number one. Ralph Macchio. So there's a couple of Eternals one-shots. This is the one I suggest. The Deviants have captured Icarus. Now under their control, Icarus has been brainwashed into assassinating Ajax. It's up to Gilgamesh and Sprite to stop and prevent an all-out war between the Eternals and the Deviants. Now that sounds good. Wish it was 56 pages, but it's 32. But at least it's only four bucks. I'm probably of the mind that you pass on Eternal Celestia. If you have to pick one, I would go with the other one. I already talked about that one. X Men Legends number eight. Larry Hama, Billy Ted. Ooh, look at that. Omega Red and Wolverine. That's what I'm talking about right there. Wolverine's hunt for the missing mutants goes from bad to worse. Following Lady Lady Deathstrike, uh, you don't even need to keep reading. All you got Omega Red, you got Lady Deathstrike. Things have gone bad to worse. Sold. X-Men The Trial Magneto. This will be unreadable dreck. I'm going to have a top 10 worst comic books of 2021 debuting on Sunday. Leah Williams is going to make the cut. Let's just say that. My goodness. $5. <laughs> $5 for Leah Williams' comic. Oh, my good. We're, li we're, li we're living in a mad world. We are living in a mad world, folks. Ugh. Sword number nine. One of the comics worth reading on the X-Men line. Al Ewing, Jakapu Kapagida. 
Jacopo Camagni. Jacopo Camagni? I probably got that one wrong. Abigail Brand's attention divided between two sword stations. All Orcus needs to pick up their moment to strike. Meanwhile, the Shiar Empress Xandra is making her first formal visit to the Lake Hellas diplomatic ring. Well, listen, probably worth reading. Hellion 16, hell yeah. That's what I got to say. Zeb Wells, Steven Segovia, the team is back together, thankfully. Fallout. The wheels have come off the Hellions bandwagon. They might all hate one another, but Nanny loves her latest edition. Is she getting a new baby? Or is this is this a smiley bot? Ah, can't wait for that one. X-Men number four. We shall see. Oh, they've already changed artist. Javier Pena. Pepe the Raz is on the cover duty now. Couldn't have called that one, could I? It's apparently a special Halloween episode with the Headless Horseman. X-Force 24. I just, I just, I'm off. I'm out. I'm out. Too many, uh, too many plant monsters for me. New Mutants 22. I was never in. And I feel bad for Rod Reese. He's doing some of the best work of his career, of his life. And that cover is interesting. I don't know that it's a great comic book cover, but it's interesting. Wolverine 17. I'm hanging on by a thread. We got Lon Medina coming in as the artist now. Maverick Returns. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll like that one. It's a weird cover. Marauders 25. Ooh, Knuckle Dusters. Whatever. Phil Noto. <laughs> I don't know why he got this gig after what he did to Cable, because that art sucked. Scalibur 24. Tinny Howard. <laughs> Spider-Woman 16, apparently in the latest issue of Spider-Woman, she beat somebody up like almost to death with a uh, baby stroller. That lets me know that's not the series for me. Miles Morales, Spider-Man 31. Well, we got Taskmaster. What's going on here? It's date night for Spider-Man, and no one informed Taskmaster that three's a crowd. If you like the series, that sounds perfectly fine for a comic book. Symbiote Spider-Man Crossroads 4. This is must-read stuff. I know a lot of people don't like Greg Land, but... Peter David is kicking ass and taking names in Marvel Comics. He's the third best writer right now behind Donny Cates and my boy Chip Zdarsky. The Marvel's number six. It's never been my thing. Avengers 40 died. What is this? Oh, it explodes in Avengers 750. World War She-Hulk goes nuclear. War beneath the waves. The Winter Hulk has been sent to Atlantis with a dark mission, and things will get even darker and bloodier if the Russian supervillain Red Widow has her way. But no matter who wins, She-Hulk and the Avengers will be changed forever. Nah, I might. Phoenix Song Echo 1 of 5. Rebecca Roanhorse. This is tied into that stupid Phoenix tournament. $5. <laughs> Avengers Tech on Avengers 3 of 6. I'm going to check this bad boy out. We'll see what happens. Iron Man 13. Let's see how bad this is going to get. Normally, you can tell it's going to be worth worth your, your time. If it's going to be epic Chris Cantwell stuff, or he's, he's just going like mundane. The epic showdown between Iron Man and his allies and Korvac and his cohort continues with Galactus's world ship. Reinforcements have finally arrived, and Tony Stark now stands a better chance of stopping Korvac from assessing the power cosmic and becoming a power crazed god all over again. Can Tony and the War Machine, Hell Cat Spider, well, Scarlet Spider, Frogman, Gargoyle, Misty Knight, and Hell uh, Halcyon end this fight once and for all, or are they all about to get a whole lot worse? And if they do, will Tony be forced to make a choice that alters the course of his, of his very human existence? Will that choice. Never mind, I'm not, that's a bad joke, but. It doesn't even hint that he's getting nagged by Hellcat, but that's going to happen. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Hellcat nags Tony Stark in Iron Man 13. Captain Marvel 33. This is the last of Marvels. There should be a... There it is. The return of Marvel's son. There you go. That's big time stuff. Shang-Chi 5. Fantastic Four 37. And they don't even have Arby Silva on the art anymore. I'll be honest, I like the cover, though. Pretty good. Winter Guard. Game of Flight. Imagine people will enjoy this one. Rick Jones, bitch! I'm Rick Jones! Black Widow 12. 
champions. United States Captain America. We got all the caps. Here's the Captain America of the military. What a novel concept. We never had one of those before. Unreadable tripe for $5. Thor 18. Dottie Kate. Pascal Ferry. When's, when's Nick Klein coming back? That's what I want to know. After the events of, events of Revelations, Thor has a top secret mission that only one trusted ally can carry out. Throg, the Frog of Thunder. Guest artist Pascal Ferry makes a return trip to Asgard for his unique tale of otherworldly espionage, one that will have a profound impact on the future of the Marvel Universe. There you go. It's all about Throg and Thor 18. Savage Avengers 25. Defenders 3 of 5. Yeah, I'm going to be reading that one. Although I just don't, I don't, what, whatever. I'm not even going to talk about that character. Daredevil 35. Apparently Elektra is still Daredevil. We've got Bullseye. I wonder if Matt has gotten out of prison yet. From this series that's taken comics world by storm for over two years, it's Grudge Match of the Century, Bullseye versus Electra. Uh, we'll see. Warhammer 40,000, Sisters of Battle. Alien number eight. I really wish they would remove the artist, Salvador La Roca. Apparently we're going to get a chicken-based alien. I imagine this means that the alien came to Earth. Is that what we're getting finally? Yeah. I'm going to say that means Alien came uh, came to, looks to be Iowa. Xenomorphs have taken over, overtaken a settlement. A last stand is made. A terrible truth is learned. The Blood Harvest. Maybe it's not Iowa. Maybe it's another planet. Star Wars High Republic Trail of Shadows. We're getting spinoffs of the High Republic. That's how low Star Wars has fallen. Star Wars High Republic. Star Wars were bounty hunters. I think I stopped reading this last week, if I remember correctly. Uh, this was the most dope part of uh, of the of the Mandalorian, right? When this motherfucker went to town, Ronnie Barnes. Okay, so it's got the writer from Philadelphia. Maybe this is one that's worth checking out, even though it's five bucks. Hopefully it doesn't tie in too much to War Bounty Hunters. I think I'm going to check that one out because I really like this robot. Now we're talking. That's a good cover. That is the cover, right? Star Wars 18. Star Wars Dr. Aphra. Star Wars Bounty Hunters. Star Wars Darth Vader. Yep, that's it. Those are the solicitations for Marvel Comics in October 2021. I went faster than normal. There just wasn't a lot to talk about. Maybe I should have perused and found some of the funnier stuff, but I think I made my point. There's a lot. We're no longer in a $5 new comic world. We're entering a $6 new comic world as far as uh, Marvel comics are concerned. Shocking, right? 